In this session, we're going to discuss how to enter a warranty claim into the Samsung HVAC B2B DR Link app. Once you uh, have downloaded it, uh, gained access, you'll see this uh, screen, this home screen. Our goal today, as I mentioned, is to enter a warranty claim into the, the system. So we'll go to the warranty section here and click on warranty claim. You'll see there's four sections in this first window that shows up. One is a new warranty claim. We click on that and hit next if we wanted to enter a new claim. The second box uh, or a radio button we would click and uh, this is a will show a listing of all those incomplete warranty claims. These are claims that you may have started and for whatever reason didn't have an opportunity to finish. Perhaps you ran out of time or didn't have uh, enough information to uh, go ahead and complete the claim. Once you do, you can come in, click on that, uh, and go back in, put in the additional information, and submit it for processing. This third uh, radio button, uh, Submitted uh, to Distributor, are a, a listing of those claims that you've already submitted to your distributor for a review and, and subsequent approval. And then finally, this AIR section, uh, Additional Information Requested by Distributor. These are those claims where the distributor is coming back and needs additional information to be able to continue to process the claim. That could be a piece of information that's perhaps not accurate, um, or maybe they need additional information to help clarify the root cause of the failure. So this would be the area that you could go into. You could click on those claims, determine what information is required, provide that information, and then resubmit to, to keep it going through the process. So. We're going to enter a new warranty claim. We're going to click on that new warranty claim um, radio button, and we're going to go ahead and click next. This is the first screen that shows up, and one of the most important pieces of information that we need to enter into the claim is that serial number. That serial number is the identifier of that piece of equipment, and is really going to tie everything together to that piece of equipment. So we're going to enter the serial number here, and I'm just going to bring in a serial number from the system. Now you want to double check the serial number. As I mentioned, it is critical that this is accurate because it's identifying that piece of equipment. And we want to make sure that the appropriate parts come up for that piece of equipment as well. So with that said, double check. But once you've confirmed, you can go ahead and click off of that cell and you'll see that you get this message here. If it had been previously registered, which we certainly hope it would be, uh, you'll see the end user address show up. Here you can see that 10054 East Tumbleweed Ave. And you can confirm, yep, that's the piece of information that I'm working on. Let me go ahead and click yes so I can continue with the process. Good news is when you select that, it actually will auto-populate a lot of the fields for you. So again, minimize the amount of effort that you're going to need to, uh, you know, for each of the claims you need to submit. In this case, it gives you a description of the unit, the model number of the unit, the install date if it was registered, and ultimately the end user information as well. One of the required fields uh, is either or the business name or the owner name. One of these has to be entered. And in this example, we're going to just put ABC Mechanical. On the right hand side, you're going to see a miscellaneous information section. If you've completed the service, so let's assume you had a part in stock and you were looking to have another replacement sent, for example. Uh, you've already completed the repair, uh, the machine's up and running. You can go ahead and click that or put the date in that you've actually completed the claim. And we can go in and do that. Yeah, it was yes on the Wednesday, completed it, good to go. Trouble uh, ticket number, if you happen to have been working with your distributor, uh, distributor to um, troubleshoot or diagnose the issue, and they gave you a call log reference number or trouble ticket number, that's where you'd put that. Uh, the nice thing about that is it gives the distributor that reference. They can easily look up that ticket number in the system, and that'll remind them what the uh, job was all about. The memo uh, is really another reference number that you can use, and it's entirely up to you if you use that field. And then the confirmation email is your direct email address as a dealer. Uh, that will be put there. Uh, you do have the ability to change that, but the, you want to make sure that at a minimum, you're receiving the confirmations, and ultimately, you can also put other email addresses in here as well. If you want to put multiple email addresses, you'd simply put a semicolon, and you would type the next email address there. Makes it uh, very simple to add multiples if you, if you need to. 
uh, the, again, uh, just to um, reiterate, the confirmation emails are sent uh, after each step in the claim process. When it changes status, you'll receive an email uh, indicating what that change of status is. And if additional information is requested, you can see that as well and go into the system and add that as we talked about before. We just talked about additional information requested. Uh, this is the area when you go back into the claim. This is where it will be located. So you'll see the confirmation number, that's the warranty claim number, what data changed, when that information was requested, and it'll actually show here hey, the model number, we need additional information, or could you help clarify the uh, root cause of the failure? And it would be shown here. You would go into that claim, add the additional information, and then resubmit. Let's go back to the main page. We can leave off right where we, uh, or start right where we left off. And we, I want to talk briefly about freight damage here. Warranty, as we know, uh, is designed to cover defects in materials and workmanship. Freight damage, on the other hand, we would cover through a freight claim process. So it's uh, very important that if you identify uh, that a piece of equipment arrives damaged, that you work with the distributor to process that freight claim. That would be handled as a freight claim and not warranty. With that said, uh, we're dealing with a warranty in this example. It was not freight related damage, uh, so we'll go ahead and click next. This area here shows the distributor. In this case, the distributor is um, Samsung in this example, Samsung HVAC. Uh, and then um, in this section, uh, you can see uh, that this next, um, this next window, this next window will um, document the dealer information, the distributor information, and ultimately the ship to information as well. So we're going to order some components. And ultimately, we need to make sure that those parts are shipped to the appropriate location. With that said, we want to confirm yep, that's our distributor and the dealer information is accurate. If I want to change the business phone number or add a mobile number and email address, by all means, you can go ahead and put that in. And then this is the area where you put the ship to information. So a couple of options here. If you want to have it shipped to the uh, distributor, you can certainly do that and have the mechanic, for example, pick that up in the morning on their way to the job site. That's an option. The other option is to have it shipped directly to you as a dealer, uh, and that'll bring in your information. And you also have the option to ship to any address that you so desire. So we could hit other, and maybe in this example, you want to ship it direct to the end user to streamline the process. Our goal is to give you a variety of options to be able to get the part to you quickly so you can address the issue and get that piece of equipment operating as fast as possible. So we're gonna go ahead in this example and just uh, have it shipped directly to uh, ourselves as the dealer. And then we can go ahead and hit the next button. This next window uh, is really the shipping instructions. So we've already defined where it's going, but what are the instructions? And the shipping confirmation email is the first thing that's going to default to your email address as the dealer. And again, if you wanted to put multiples, you could go ahead and put that semicolon and add as many email addresses in between as you'd so desire. The tag warranty order. This would be, for example, you know, have Joe pick up part when it arrives. So if you wanted Joe to come into the, uh, to the office and pick up the part, uh, when it arrives, you can put a note in there. It really is for your benefit uh, to help you understand, you know, what the status of that part is, where is it going, and so on. And you can also put a shipping memo in here as well. Once we're done with that, we can click Next. And we would go to the Replacement Parts section. Mm -hmm. It's important that we understand what replacement part needs to be uh, replaced uh, to resolve the issue. So presumably you've gone through, you've diagnosed the equipment, you've identified the part or parts that need to be replaced. Or if you need support, you can reach out to your distributor. They have qualified folks on hand. They can help guide you through that diagnostic process and help select the appropriate components. Once you're done with that, you'd come in and go ahead and put the parts or select the parts that you'd want. A couple of options here. You have the ability to use the pull down, or you can go ahead and type a part number directly in there and it'll shorten the list for you. In this example, uh, we're going to use this electronic expansion valve. We found that we had a defective uh, EEV. We'll go ahead and select that EEV, and it's important to click this Add button. If it doesn't show up in the list in the bottom, 
uh, unfortunately it won't be ordered. So we need to make sure that we do select add and verify that, yep, sure enough, it's listed there. Great, we're good to go there. And you also see that this will show up, uh, this part or parts that you have listed will show up on the email confirmation as well once we're done. This probably is one of the uh, most important areas. It's really the problem cause solution. It's critical for us to understand what the root cause of the issue is so we can drive corrective action on our end and, and prevent a recurrence of the issue as we move forward. So that information is something that's vital uh, to, again, driving corrective action. And it's important that we include it here in this section. So I'm gonna type it in here as an example. Uh, and the problem defective EEV cause stuck valve and then the solution replace valve and we could put uh, validated that valve was stuck um, to no temp change coil. So you have the information in there. Certainly you could put uh, you know, free form and put in whatever text you want, or you could copy and paste from your service ticket if that's easier. Put the information in there so the distributor knows exactly what occurred and what action needs to take. Um, so um, once we're done with that, we'd go ahead and click next. And we're finished. It says, do you want to submit the warranty claim? Sure do. Uh, we're done with the process. We're going to go ahead and submit the claim. And once we're done, it says it was completed successfully. Uh, it's great news. Uh, we can go in and view and print the confirmation. As I mentioned, it will also be sent directly to your email. But we can view it here just so you can get an example of what it looks like. Here's the claim. Uh, it's got all the information, um, all that stuff we just wrote in about the uh, failure explanation and so on it shows up. Confirmation number is your warranty claim number. So please use that as a reference going forward. If you need to check on the status, if you need to call up the distributor to understand or have a discussion, that would be the number you'd want to reference. And then so on. We go down the dealer information, end user information, ship to information, that tag order, Yep, when that comes in, we need to have Joe pick that up. All of the things that we uh, put into the claim show up here and are summarized. Important thing down the bottom is, again, validate that that part you need is listed here. If for some reason you forgot to add it, it won't show up. And as a result, um, we won't be able to ship a part um, from that standpoint. So uh, very important that you do that. Closing that out now, we have a couple of options. We can either go to a new claim or finish with this one if we need to enter another one. Uh, we can go ahead and do that, and it'll bring us into that front screen again for the, uh, entering a new claim, or we can close and exit, and it will bring us to the home screen. It's as simple as that. Uh, that's the process for entering a warranty claim in the system and reviewing those claims. We also talked about some of the communications that occur in the process and so on. If you have any questions, please reach out directly to your distributor, and they can certainly guide you through the process.